descriptions of him, obviously not supply information, but uh, direct him to various areas and assume facts that are in evidence for him. Um, he, for, the, for the court's edification, he had uh, hip surgery in late October of 18 and was not in the hospital and on sick leave um, from the last week of October all the way through November and into the first week of December. So there was a lot that went on that he wasn't even there for. Um, that's my request. Who's up for Cross and the witness? I'm Cross and the witness, Your Honor. Okay. Any position? Uh, yes, Your Honor. I, I think with respect to the state's calling the witness, um, I think he's open to any questions that are within his scope of knowledge. Well, I don't think she's trying to curtail your ability to cross. Oh, not at all, Your Honor. Not at all. I anticipate you'll be asking about all kinds of things in the pharmacy system. Okay. I thought she was trying to eliminate a cumulative effect. I wasn't sure. No. Are you want to leave? Yes, to, to the extent to get through that, To get to the point, she wants a little bit of a lead, way to lead so that we don't get trickling into things. Okay. All right. Well, I think if it gets to the point where it's... If it becomes problematic, sure. then we'll talk. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, you know, I want to res obviously reserve the right to object if we get into, you know, volumes of cumulative information. But uh, I don't intend to step on cross at all. Okay. On another topic, may I comment? Make sure. Um, I, I heard the state mention that they're looking to, I guess, cut back on the cumulative, the potential cumulative issues that may arise in the case. Uh, and if they're interested in meeting over the lunch hour on how we could trim this case down a little bit, we're more than happy to meet with them and see what, what issues we can uh, work on and perhaps what witnesses we might be willing to trim this case down so we can move it along as needed. Always. Okay. Yeah, we're always interested. Well, I'll give you guys something to do during the lunch hour. Yeah, thank you. Anything else? Ms. Schaefer? Bram. Did you have something else? Yes, uh, I just wanted to, I know that Dr. Moody is the second witness up, and I wanted to just make sure that we didn't have any more 702 issues as it relates to the specific witness. Uh, she did not work the night shift at ICU. She worked uh, the day shift. Uh, we certainly don't mind her going into the patients that she worked on in this case, but to get, uh, get into her palliative withdrawal, uh, uh, her excavations for which Dr. Hughes will never witness or was present for, uh, I think it's going to take us down that road again. And I just wanted to bring it to the court's attention. Um, I imagine being a fact witness, that's what she is. I assume that's what she's going to be, a fact witness? She is a fact witness that has expert knowledge, Judge. We're not asking her to opine on Dr. Husel's practices. We will solicit from her and from every other doctor that has done palliative extubations with the same pa po patient population, in many cases the same patients, that's treated the same patients, we will ask what their practices are to give the jury, because that is what this is about. Uh, what is the standard of care? Uh, what do they do? I think that's entirely appropriate. We intend to ask every doctor that question, just as we have it. That was a fact witness. What is your practice? What are the drugs you give? And what are the doses you give? And I think it's entirely appropriate. It is the point of the case. These are the backdoor experts. They're trying to, they're trying to enter this evidence in through their bootstraps. It's clear that that's why they've, given, they've been given the ability to call five expert witnesses to testify to this. Doc, unless they can show that these doctors trained Dr. Husel to do it this way, or, or instructed him to do it this way, or that he was present to do it this way, how they, how they work with patient A has nothing to do with how Dr. Husel uh, dealt with patient B. These aren't, uh, we've heard multiple times by all of these, uh, by everyone that's testified, everything is patient specific. To start generalizing it by asking them how they do things, 
I think clearly goes outside the realm and is, and is simply a backdoor way of, uh, of attempting to get an expert testimony, as admitted by the prosecutor by saying that they have expert knowledge. If, if, if that's if that's not a sign as to what their true intent is, I don't know what it is. Well, it goes back to our discussions earlier between subjective approach and objective. So we're just going to have to go through my guess as we go. You know, because I feel that they get in the subjective side of it, but as long as the first time they opine, they better be qualified. I, I think what happens is they ask them how they do it, and then they ask, have you had any problems doing it that way? Well, that's subjective to the, to the family. If my, if my loved one is being tortured because they're not getting enough pain meds, that's specifically my issue. And they may, they may not necessarily convey that to the physician. They might convey it to the nurse. We have no way of knowing all of this. And this just opens the door to so many issues, so many potential issues that, that properly affect the constitutional issue of Dr. Hussle's right to confront his, his, those witnesses who are testifying against him. So, so for that reason, I think we're really treading dangerous waters here. In, in light of uh, in light of what the prosecutor's intent is. Okay. Well, I don't I don't agree with you on the intent of the prosecutor. We've had this discussion before. And anytime you get into these quasi experts, you've got to go through the analysis. I laid it out before, as I understand 702, 704. Um, so we'll leave it at that. We're just going to have to deal with it as we go. I'm just saying, sir. I don't see a choice, you know. Well. Respectfully, I do, but okay. I, I, okay, you're saying I should ban all the testimony of these doctors? <laughs> really? I'm sorry? I should ban Ted. I should just not permit these doctors to testify because of the potential problems? No, they should be allowed to testify just about relevant evidence. It's irrelevant what Dr. Moody does with patient A as it relates to indictment patient B. And I, I don't see how her... How is it... Okay. You're asking the doctors on how they perform things. One of the examples will be this doctor dealt with them during the day shift, Dr. Houston dealt with them during the night shift. It's perfectly relevant on how they would have handled the situation. I, I believe it's relevant to um, what they did specifically with this patient and why they did what they did as it relates to the indictment patients, but how, um, how they handle their extubations on other patients, I, I, I simply don't see. I don't think that's what he's asking. He's asking, now, I think it would be fair for him to say, is this how you do it? And that's it. We've made our record, okay? Let's get the jury in here and rock. Thank you, Ron. We can have more discussions on the break. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. There's something else? Yes, please. And I'm sure you were already going to do it, but if you could advise the jury as to why we're not continuing with Dr. Eli. That was my first thing out of the box. Thank you, Judge. And I'm going to fall on the sword for the whole thing. I'm not going to point at anybody. It'll be my decision. Okay. Since it was my decision. I appreciate that. Gee, should we get here early enough? I told her to bring in the jury. He wants to go to the restroom.